tabs and terminal emulation inside of GNS3. This is going to address one of the questions I get all the time. Let's begin. One of the questions I get all the time is, hey, Keith, how exactly do you get these tabs all set up inside of your terminal emulation from GNS3? And the answer is really, really simple. We, first of all, you need a program that will support those tabs. And then secondly, we're going to tell GNS3 that we want to use that program. How do you set that up? I'm glad you asked. Let's do that right now. Let's start with the basics and see what happens with a default configuration. On R1, GNS3 and Dynamips behind the scenes, it knows that R1's console port is logically reachable, for example, at port 2001. So TCP port 2001 leads us to that console port. TCP port 2002, as an example, might lead us to R2. Now those are all configurable and changeable, but those are the defaults for the routers. So what happens is, when we click on this icon right here, if we have two devices, it opens up two consoles, two putty sessions, one going to TCP 2001 on the local host, and the other at 2002 on the local host. So two different windows. The magic that makes that happen behind the scenes is based on our preferences. And the default preferences are important to see. Check this out under Edit preferences let's go take a look at what the terminal preferences are so under general terminal settings and here's the magic when we actually launch a console it's launching in the background putty for us now putty got installed as part of the gns3 all-in-one installer it's installed right in that gns3 folder along with the executable for gns3 and it's going to say putty we're going to run telnet and it has a bunch of variables as well some of those variables include the port so for example, if we double clicked on R1, if it was running, it would know, oh, R1 is port number 2001, and that way Putty could telnet to port 2001 and connect us to the correct device. Now here's the magic in this. If we don't want to use Putty, we don't have to. We could put any terminal emulation program right here. Let's just verify before we make any changes that this does work. We'll open up a couple windows, and there's R1 and R2, and that works great. So two different windows, and they're both running putty to the correct device. And if we did a show users, it would also verify for us that we are sitting logically on the console port. See, the router doesn't know. It's all emulated, so we're logically sitting on the console port because we went to port 2001 on the host computer running GNS3 slash Dynamips. So let's change the rules. Let me close these windows. And let's go say, well, we want to use something different. Edit preferences. Instead of using the good old putty, under terminal settings, general terminal settings, let's use, and there's one for secure CRT, which is what I normally use in my production environment. Let's use Super Putty. Now, why is Super Putty? Super Putty isn't really a terminal emulation program, it's a front end. It still uses Putty, but it lets you have your different windows in tabs. So you have a single window with a tab for each device. Let's go ahead and use it. And the first thing I want to impress upon your mind is this just because we said use Super Putty here, doesn't mean it's changing this string right here. We need to click on the use button and that puts in the correct syntax for super putty. There's one other large hurdle that we need to go over and that is where do we get super putty? And the place we get super putty is by Googling super putty. <laughs> Just like that. And if we go to the first hit that comes up is a Google site. So we'll bring that open and you download it. So the current flavor is 1.3.0.11. You're going to download that, extract it, and just put the files, just put them in the GNS3 folder right with PuTTY and everything else. And that way you can know exactly where it's kept. Once you've downloaded that, then in GNS3 you can point to it and then simply launch it. So I'm going to click OK on this. And we need to do one more thing. Now, when I want to launch a, con a connection to R1, I double click on R1 and it brings up da -da -da -da, Super PuTTY. But you know what happened? When I opened this the very first time, Super Putty said, oh, I need to know where Putty is because this is really just a front end. So what I did was it gave me this menu right here under Tools and Options. It gave me this menu, and I said, okay. I browsed over to GNS3, and I said, here's my Putty file. Once I had the Putty file, it was still okay, but it was bringing up multiple windows. I wanted them tabbed, one window with multiple tabs. To fix that, I went to the Advanced tab here inside of the configuration for Super Putty, and I click this checkbox right here that says allow only a single instance of Super Putty. That's the magic. So if I say use only a single instance of Super Putty, check this out. If I open up R2, it launches Super Putty, but it puts it in the same window. So I've got R1 right here and R2 in a separate tab. 
Now, if that wasn't good enough, and that's pretty good, I've got one more little trick up my sleeve that'll blow your socks off. One thing I really love to have is I like to have my terminals side by side. Let's say you're troubleshooting and you want to see the console messages from two different devices or multiple devices at the same time. Check this out. Take your mouse, click on the tab for one of your devices and start dragging it. All these help icons are going to come. If I want to put this on the right hand side, check this out. I hover over this icon right here and it puts it as splits console screens. <laughs> and you can have like four different devices, one in each quadrant, or if you want top over bottom, you can click on the tab, drag it, and say, I want them on the bottom half, just like that. Maybe you want one of your devices to take a teeny, a smaller space. You can click and drag, and way over here on the right, it says make it a small column on the right. And if I click and drag it over here, I can make it a small column on the left. I think you get the idea. Very, very, flexible and really this is just a front end for a good old putty and it's all free in this micro nugget we've taken a look at how to customize the actual terminal application that we're going to be using in conjunction with gns3 i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing